Hi, I'm Darren Chris, and you're watching Cabo Bay in L.A. Darren Chris, we're going to be talking about him today on the show. He received a $25,000 check. What is that for, and who was that from? We're going to be talking about that today on the show. But before that, fan moment for me. This guy, I've been a fan of this guy. My whole family has been a fan of this guy since we were in the Philippines. The Quick Brown Fox from the Philippine Basketball Association. Ricky Brown is joining us today on Cover by in L.A. Hello. Welcome Hi, to Janelle. The show. Thank you so much for having me today. It is such a pleasure and honor for me. I had a family dinner last night and I told my brother, you know, guess who my guest is? And he goes, who? I go, Ricky Brown. He goes, can you, can you get an autograph for me? So I'm going to get that later. But for now, you know, thank you so much. You have been an asset to Philippine Basketball Association. You played there for many years. You were the first ever Filipino for Foreigner player that ever played in the PBA. Tell us about that journey. Yes, that was, uh, you know, it's, it's something I'm very proud of, especially today. There's a lot of Filipino Americans and Filipino foreigners as well in the PBA. Uh, and I'm in touch with many of them. And they let me know that, uh, you know, that they're proud of, of my accomplishments there. Um, and it all started, uh, I played college basketball here at Pepperdine University. And uh, when I was drafted by the Houston Rockets and the NBA, um, I was with them for a few months, and when they released me, um, Dandin Kuanko uh, came to me, and he wanted me to play for the RP national team, which is something I was very, very receptive to. And that's how I came to the Philippines. Uh, and the intention was not to play in the PBA. The intention was to represent the Philippines on the national team. But the thing is, uh, you were receptive to, to that because you are Filipino. You have Filipino blood in you. Your mom is Filipino? Yes, my mother's a Filipina and lots of family in Manila. And, um, you know, that was something that I, that was very special for me to go to my mother's homeland and at the same time to be able to represent the country and play the game that I that I loved was something really special. And you did that, but then at the same time you stayed to play in the Philippine Basketball Association. What happened is, uh, because we were a very, very controversial team, we had uh, several Americans uh, that were not Filipino, with no Filipino blood, and uh, the team wasn't well received by the people. And when that team disbanded, uh, I fell in love with the Philippines. I didn't want to leave, and I had the opportunity to go to the PBA. So um, that's when I made the move from Mr. Kuanko with his, with his good grace to go to the Philippine Basketball Association. And first team will buy is great taste. Yes. Yes, because that's where I, I remember I seeing you so great taste. Saka ang forte mo is outside shooting, <laughs> shooting guard talaga. But I'm sure it, you made it look so easy, but it wasn't easy. No, it wasn't easy at all. And, and in fact, uh, I think because uh, of the, the fact that I played with uh, Mr. Kuanko's team, that wasn't well received, um, many people didn't believe that I was Filipino. Mm. That was one thing. And then the other was uh, there were a lot of rumors about my salary, which were not true. Um, it, long story short, it, it took a little time, and it was tough at first, but uh, the people, you know, embraced me. And uh, after that, it was, it was as good as it can get. And that is why you created a following in the Philippines, so many fans. And you will be pleased to know for all the Ricky Brown uh, fans like myself and my family, you have a chance to meet with him and take pictures with him. Tell us about that night uh, that will be sponsored by the L.A. Clippers, no less. Yes, the L.A. Clippers is quite a thrill for me. And I'd like to give props to Jessica Bascara, the uh, executive at the Clippers who arranged this. On Monday, March 26th at 5.30 p.m., uh, they will have uh, a meet and greet for me with the Filipino basketball fans. And I'd like to invite everyone over. Uh, I really look forward to meeting you and your family. And um, it's, it's really something very, very special uh, for me. Unfortunately, they couldn't get me on the Filipino Heritage Night, right. which is this Wednesday. A different night, yes. Yes. But uh, thanks to a lot of the fans, especially my Facebook fans, they overwhelmed the Clippers with emails and requests, and the Clippers contacted me and said, we, we're going to have a separate night for you. Now, you have a different profession now. You're actually a principal. This is just the first part of our interview with Ricky Brown. There's two more parts, but you, you're going to have to catch a couple by in L.A. tomorrow and on Thursday to catch that. But for now, as a principal, different, very different uh, profession, would you say once a basketball player, always a basketball player? I think, you know, basketball is in my blood. I mean, since I was three years old, you know, I played basketball. I loved it. Uh, but one thing I can say about my profession in education is a lot of things, a lot of the discipline and work ethic 
from being a basketball player transferred very easily over to being an educator. Right, and we're going to be talking about that in the coming days here on the show, but for now we'll leave you with a few reminders. Don't forget to catch Ricky Brown meet and greet on Monday, um, and we'll have the information for you as well here on Cabo Bay in LA. For now, thank you. Thank you. And we'll be back for more. Don't go away. Hi, I'm Darren Chris, and you're watching Cabo Bay in LA. Program. I promised you sports, community, and culture today on Cabo Bay in LA. For culture, we are actually giving away a $2,000 debut package. So, lahat na mga magde-debut sa, sa Tagalog, ayan. Uh, we're giving it to you for free. And we have a contest that we will be launching today on the show. Stick around for that. Dahil alam nyo na, dito sa America, everything is expensive. And if you can get a debut package for free, why not, di ba? It's $2,000 worth. And we'll tell you the details, also the mechanics later on in the program. Also, we talked about community, a big event in Carson, and as I promised earlier, we're going to give you some of the performers that will be performing there para meron kayong sample ng music at entertainment na mapapanood nyo. And in sports, yesterday, after 20 long years of being away from Philippine Basketball Association, Ricky Brown is reconnecting with his friends and fans. He used to be called the Quick Brown Fox in the PBA. He was the 1983 Rookie of the Year in the PBA, also the 1985 Most Valuable Player, and he here is the second part of our interview with him. Rookie of the Year, 1983. Most Valuable Player, 1985. You created a following. Uh, you also did a movie. So you were doing so well, flourishing in the Philippines, but you left. Yes. Um, you know, in 1988, I came down with, I had a serious injury. And uh, I didn't pay attention to it. I didn't take care of myself. And what happened is, is uh, I went into a second stage congestive heart failure. Spent 19 days in the hospital. Um, I recovered. I came back here to LA and recovered. Uh, came back in 1989. I was with San Miguel. I left a uh, great taste in, after the 1987 season, which was very difficult. But I went to a great organization and great team. I came back in 89 to help them win the Grand Slam. And then I, uh, my father had a heart attack. So there were a lot of personal issues, family uh, concerns. And uh, I decided to come back in 1990. And I came late because of some family uh, uh, circumstances. And I played one game. And I had to have an emergency surgery oh, right wow. after that. So I just, you know, I kind of reflected. And I looked in the mirror. And I said, you know, the handwriting, I think, is on the wall. Right. It's just so many things going on. And I'm, you know, physically was, was beaten up a little bit at the time. So a lot of therapy. And my point is, uh, a lot of the fun was taken out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you're a professional athlete, uh, it seems, uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of glory and glamour. But when you, if you're not having fun, mm -hmm. um, it takes a lot of the, uh, the love out of it. And I just made a very difficult decision. Uh, you know, to stop playing the game that I played forever. Wise words. Did you regret any of those? Oh, I regretted it for years. I mean, um, for years and years, I, I, I used to ask myself and really second guess why I did what I did. And I missed the Philippines. More than anything, I missed the Filipino people. Um, the love and support that they gave me was just beyond words. Uh, so it was very, very difficult, uh, quite a difficult transition for me, uh, along with the fact that coming back here, um, you know, I had to pick up the pieces and right. make a decision on what I'm going to do with life after basketball. And how did you stumble upon education? Sure, you're now the principal in ABC Unified School District. And when you say that, I think a lot of our viewers will be able to relate to you because a lot of us uproot ourselves in the Philippines. They, we move here, and from here, no matter what we were, who we were, what we had in the Philippines, it's all back to zero, starting from scratch. And you did that. I had a long conversation with uh, someone at Pepperdine University that I'm very close to and I had to make a decision do I want to go into coaching which would be a natural for me and I had the opportunity or do I want to go into education because all my life has been athletics and education um, and after talking with him I made a decision with their help uh, to get my teaching credential and um, I taught for five years and uh, I had a principal that uh, uh, influenced me quite a bit and, and said I think you could be an administrator one day and I made a decision to go back and get my administrative credential and I was an assistant principal 
uh, for 12 years, and I've been a principal in the uh, very, very prestigious and wonderful ABC Unified School District in Cerritos, Artesia, uh, for the last four years. Mm -hmm. So wow. I have absolutely no regrets. I'm, I'm at a wonderful school, Ross Middle School, with a great staff, great kids, about 15% Filipinos, so wow. a lot of Filipinos. So they know you. Oh, they know me, and <laughs> I know all the restaurants and Valerio's Bakery, right. and, and it's 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 really been a blessing for me. And you look very happy. You look at peace, so you no regrets, as you said. But this will come naturally for you as well, since you're in education. Let's talk about lessons, okay? Number one, being the first ever Filipino foreigner to play in the PBA, there were resentments, not just because of your tie tie up with the the um, the national team that wasn't received very well but there but then also at the same time now when you talk about Phil foreigners in the Philippines there is kind of like a mixed reaction some people like it some people don't some Phil foreigners have had bad raps in the Philippines and what are your thoughts on that well I think what what I will tell the Filipino uh, foreign players uh, specifically the Phil Ams a lot of them are from here in California is that they are truly blessed with an opportunity to play the game they love uh, in front of the best fans in the world and make a good living. And one of the things that I'm going to re request of them is uh, to make sure and, and give back to the people. Uh, they're on a platform now that uh, people will listen. And uh, I think that uh, you know they have an opportunity to do something very special. Um, I didn't take that opportunity like I should have and I could have. And thank goodness, and, and, and believe me, I thank God every day that I have the opportunity now. I've reconnected with the people, maybe more than ever. Um, and when I go back in uh, Manila this July, I'm, I'm going to make the most of it and, and try to do as much as I can for the people, especially the youth. Reconnecting with fans because he has so much to share and you will be inspired. And before he goes to Manila on July 9, you're also doing a meet and greet hosted by the LA Clippers, no less. Tell us about that. Yes. That is coming up on March 26th on Monday. Uh, it's a 7.30 game versus the Hornets, but the meet and greet will be at 5.30 p.m. Uh, much thanks to Jessica Vascara of the Clippers who has arranged this. Um, I, I'm really looking forward to meeting all the uh, Filipino basketball fans here in the Los Angeles area. So if you have the opportunity, I'd like to invite you to come out. And uh, it will be my pleasure and honor to meet you and your family. that this was your view every single day? Well, imagine no more because today on Couple Buy in LA, we're giving you a chance to win this $2 million Hollywood Hills home for just $150. We're talking about the Special Olympics. This is a very special fundraising as well. But before we continue, I'd like to give you the last part of our interview with former PBA MVP Most Valuable Player, Ricky Brown. I know a lot of you have been following. He's been connecting and reconnecting with his fans. Here it is. Lessons from Ricky Brown, injury. What has injury taught you? Well, injury has taught me that uh, as life as a professional athlete is very, very fragile, and that re may emphasizes even more the need to have an education. Um, your one blown knee uh, or a bad back away from your career being over. And uh, I had every injury imaginable. Uh, I've had three back surgeries wow. post PBA. Ouch. I was out of work 11 months. Um, in 2000 was my last surgery, so uh, I have paid the piper when it comes to, uh, to injuries. And even though when you're young, you're strong, you think you're indestructible, nothing can, can happen, uh, believe me, it can stop you. It seems to me that the PBA, it's an organization that gave you so much, so much love from your fans, so much adulation and all that, also gave you a good, a good uh, amount of grief. Well, you know, I never took anything personal. And that's what I would tell the Philippine, uh, uh, the Filipino American players there is, you know, don't, don't take it personal. Um, there, there was some resentment, especially being the first. Mm -hmm. um, and when I look back, um, you know, I had to have alligator skin because I think I heard anything and everything. Plus all the uh, injuries that you got too, it must have, you know. Yeah, the injuries, I think what happened, I think the people embraced me uh, when they saw that I came to play hard every night. Um, I wasn't a showboat. Uh, I respected my uh, opponents, um, and um, you know I'm, I th I tried to carry myself as a as a professional athlete. So that said, what do you miss most about the Philippine Basketball Association? I miss the fans. I miss the people. That's I, I don't miss 
I don't miss the basketball. I don't miss playing. I don't miss the locker room. I had wonderful times, great experiences, and, and, and great relationships through the years. Um, but my relationship with the Filipino people uh, cannot be replaced. And uh, that's, that's one reason I'm going back this July is, is uh, I want to give back. Uh, it, it is within me to do so. Um, there's no personal agenda. It's not about money. Uh, it's about just giving back, and uh, uh, this is going to be really special for me. And I think it's also about staying in touch and keeping in touch. When I was new here, um, I had uh, started my career covering the PBA, and I knew that you were here. I tried to look for you. Tried to. I, I heard people saying that you didn't want to be connected or associated with the PBA, that you wanted to just live your life here separate from the PBA. Is that true? No, that's not, that's not true at all. Um, when I came back here, we didn't have the, the media capabilities that we, that we do now, obviously, with Facebook and Twitter and, and the Internet. So um, it was very difficult for me to stay in tune with what was going on back in the Philippines, um, you know, besides newspapers. So, no, it, it wasn't the case at all. I, you know, uh, my wife is a Filipina, and, uh, you know, I have a lot of family here. So uh, my desire to reconnect with the, the Filipino people is why I'm where I'm, I'm at today. Right, right. Doing a Filipino meet and greet hosted by the LA Clippers. And also tell us about the July 9th um, event in the Philippines, in Manila. Yes, this is my homecoming. Um, and it's been a long time. It's been 20 plus years since I've been back. And one of the reasons I couldn't go back prior to, prior to that was because of my back surgeries. Okay. I could not travel. So uh, I'm ready to go July 9th. I will be back in Manila. Uh, they have several activities set up with meet and greets and a PBA night. Um, I look forward to, to seeing uh, uh, Mr. Kowanko and Dolphy and Coach Ron Jacobs and several of my, my former teammates and, of course, my family. Dolphy, there. because you did a movie with him. So you weren't only an athlete in the Philippines. You were also an actor. In 1987, Dolphy uh, approached me and uh, uh, asked me if I wanted to do a movie with him uh, called Action Is Not Missing. <laughs> and that was with Paquito Diaz, Dick Israel, uh, Francis Magalona. Uh, it was an unbelievable experience, and I became uh, very close to Dolphy. And, uh, you know, now I know why uh, uh, when people talk of Dolphy, he touched me in a way that, yes. that, that few. He's a very, very special man. Amazing, yes. amazing guy. So would you consider acting going back to the Philippines now, too? Oh, is, is that an option? If I had the opportunity to do some things, I surely would. Yes. But, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not looking for that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm if going it back. comes, you're it, open. Absolutely, I'm right. open to that. And one of my goals is to reestablish a connection with the Philippines. What I plan to do is... Um, is to go back annually mm -hmm. um, and just maintain that relationship with the people and the Philippine basketball. And maybe you can be a color commentator too for the PBA coverages. Oh, I'd like right? to do that if, yes. the, if the opportunity, yes. Yes, but you know what? Okay, a lot of people watching us now, parents, kids who want to start a career in the Philippines as a basketball player, as an actor, I think it encompasses everything. Um, what would your advice be? And I, th I, I think we talked about this earlier speaking to Tagalog, respecting people that you're with over there and all that, what would be the best advice you could give them? Yeah, well, if you're, if you're blessed enough to have the opportunity to go back to the Philippines to, to play in front of the people, uh, always know that, uh, you know, you're, you're under the microscope, uh, carry yourself as a professional, uh, and give back to the people, engage the people. It's not, like, it's not like here in the States. You know, the fans are at the games, they're, they're, they're entertained. In the Philippines, uh, there's a relationship that they develop. And if you allow that to happen, you will be embraced like you've never been embraced before. Um, one thing I would say with the young people here in the, in, uh, in the States, the young Filipinos that are dreaming of going to the PBA, um, there's nothing wrong with dreaming. Work hard, uh, develop your game, uh, but get that education. That's your security. Um, you know, I played, you know, I played 10 years, but I, I was in my mid uh, of you know, early 30s when I stopped playing. Mm -hmm. So there's life after basketball, and you need something to fall back on, and that's that education. Wonderful, wonderful words of wisdom from Ricky Brown. Meet him uh, March 26? 26. 26, 26 yes. uh, hosted by the LA Clippers at the Staples Center. That's the information on the screen. Also in Manila, for those of you who are going to Manila or who have friends and family in the Philippines, tell them about July 9th. Also information on the screen. For now, thank you so much and more power to you. Safe travels. Oh, thank you so much, Janelle. From one inspiring athlete to an inspiring organization, 
more from the Special Olympics, also giving you a chance to win this $2 million home for $150 per ticket. And we have more for you when we return. Don't go away.